Hi, this is Mo Nawaz from Success News once more. Today, I've got Janice B. Gordon, who will be joining us as part of the team going forward for Success News. Janice is becoming one of our editors who will be helping to interview and bring more information for our audience out there to learn about strategies. Um, Janice has um, worked um, with the Cranfield School of Management. Uh, she's a very, very good advocate on problem solving, known as the problem solver um, throughout the whole of the industry. So I'll let Janice explain more about herself than I can explain in any way, shape or form. So first of all, I'd like to welcome you, Janice, to Success News as one of the new editors. It's lovely to be here, Mo. Janice, tell me a little bit more about the Cranfield School of Management. Um, yes, I did my MBA there and enjoyed it immensely. Um, I tell you what, the thing that it really brought out was what are my key and unique strengths and feeling really comfortable in your skin. Um, we all have something to, to offer the world and I think Cranfield allowed me to be me. Okay, how long ago was that? Oh, many years now. Many years, yeah. <laughs> um, I finished in 2002 mm -hmm. and um, over that, uh, uh, since that, that time I've you know, opened businesses um, and grown businesses. I've worked for innovation consultancy. It's really expanded my, mm -hmm. my field of experience. Okay. So how long have you been in, in the problem solving business, as you would put it? All my life. All your life solving <laughs> problems of yes. one form or another. Yes. You, we all have unique skills. And one of my skills is to um, almost in the questioning that I, I do with my, my clients and to see and make connections with things that they can't see themselves. So I'm able to resolve issues because I'm able to ask the right questions. And that actually enables me to help my customers and solve their problems. Okay. We often know the answers, but we actually can't see it. So that's what I do, is I bring all of that together. So you drill deep down, deeper and deeper into each question and until you get to the heart of the problem? Yes. Okay. What sort of questions do you normally ask if it's to do with management, if it's to do with the corporate sort of sector? What sort of questions do you ask? Well, as you say, you dig deeper and deeper and, and one question leads, leads to another question, but I'm, a, I'm quite a quick fire mm -hmm. question because I don't want them to think about it. Mm -hmm. I just want the, the answer that really comes from the most immediate situation. So it will be things um, like what keeps them awake at night? and their dreams and aspirations for the business. I mean, why did they set up the business in, in the first place? Or what aspirations they might have had for, for the company? Often we don't dream big enough, so I need to kind of delve into what's the, what are their limiting beliefs or limiting factors of the business. And often these are things that we imagine ourselves. Just because the box is so big now doesn't mean that the box can't be way bigger. So what's the thing that's stopping them from growing the box? Oh, excellent, excellent. Um, you're also an accomplished author. Um, uh, what's the book title again? Remind me. It's Business Evolution, Creating Growth in a Rapidly Changing World. Wow, wow. Uh, I mean, you're quite well known within the industry, within the corporate sector, as a problem solver. Mm. How did the name come about, by the way? Well, when I did my MBA at Cranfield, I read all of the management books and business books from all of the gurus and things. And I realised when I was actually in business, as much as those theories were really useful, the world has changed. You know, the internet and technology has changed the way we do business, but a lot of the information we have is really, it was written 20 years ago. So I wrote a book based on my own experience in starting and growing a business and all of the advice that I'd given to innovation companies over that period of time. And I realized there were certain um, characteristics, certain elements to a business that people are not talking about. Mm -hmm. and, and it's because we are in a rapidly changing world. Mm -hmm. And what often happens with business leaders is there's so much information that comes at us, we forget who we are. 
we lose a sense of why we're there. Mm -hmm. And this is really to bring us back to why we're in business, what we're about, what's unique and different about, and how we can portray that mm -hmm. to our customers. Not all customers, mm -hmm. but our, our unique group of customers that are always going to love what we do. Mm -hmm. So it's about finding the right people. Mm -hmm. It's about communicating to the right people. It's about making yourself identifiable. Mm -hmm. Whether you're in business, running a business, or, or whether you're starting a business or leading other people in a business, you've got to be identifiable and recognisable. People have got to know you for who you are in order to follow you, whether they're customers or employees. So it's really about those ideas and how to um, ensure that you bring that out in your business. How, how does one find, I mean, in business generally, um, at the corporate level, um, they are always hiring consultants, strategists to help them to move to the next level, or if they've got problems with departments, they'll go and seek the professional advice of an expert to help them to move along and overcome those sort of um, problems with solutions. But within the SME sector, it's always very hard for people to reach out and ask for advice to try and find a solution, and yet most of the people try and battle everything, trying to do everything themselves. Why do you think that is, Janice? I think um, people start a business because they have a certain skill set. Then when you, you start and you're growing your business, you have to do everything. So then you start to think you can do everything. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the danger. And they don't, um, they don't uh, outsource early enough, mm -hmm. really. And then that starts to limit your business. So you become a, a victim of your own success in business. And so what I, I do is I park where you are now and I uh, help the business owner to look at what are the possibilities? Dream bigger than you ever thought possible. Mm -hmm. Because you can't do that in your box. If I keep you in your box, I want to take you out of your box. And actually, let's look at who you are. Mm -hmm. What are your mm -hmm. real mm -hmm. aspirations? And then it's a lot easier to get mm -hmm. people to imagine that is true. Mm -hmm. That's real. Because it's actually th what you've told me. Mm -hmm. You've given me your dream. Mm -hmm. And it's true. It's real to mm -hmm. you. You can smell it, touch it. So all I need to do is create the link from where you are now mm -hmm. to what the possibilities are. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent answer. Um, people, again, uh, misuse and abuse the word strategy in many ways when people don't really have a notion of what strategy really means. If you were to get involved in uh, a sales process, how would you explain strategic selling? Strategic selling is about, still about your customer. It's actually not about you, it's about your customer. So it's actually really thinking who are your most valued customers? Mm -hmm. Who are the people are they going to get what you do? So even if you're business, business to business or business to consumers, strategic selling is about really taking a step back from your business. What's unique and different? What differentiates you? And then thinking about who are the customers that are going to absolutely love that? And then you need to make the connection to the two. So actually, it's not going out selling at all. It's actually going out building relationships with what you can offer, what's unique and different about what you can offer. And then the tactical side of it is actually applying a lot of those strategies to ensure that you um, give your customers the right communication in order for them to know that you have got the best product for them. So it's often it's, it's taking a step back first. Okay. Is there such thing as strategic social um, selling? Yes, there is, because the two things work together. You've, you've got social selling, so these are all the channels that you might use in order to engage and connect with your ideal customers. And then you've got strategically thinking about, you know, what's unique and different, what, how, um, what's your differentiation. But it actually, social is just using what channels to reach those people. So if you're thinking strategically about how you're going to sell to a market and what you're offering, what's the real value that you're offering, then actually you're just choosing the right channels to do it. So the two things work together, and that's what I talk a lot about. Okay. So if somebody um, in, in a managerial position and they're managing a number of accounts, how would they, at the end of the day, really um, manage those accounts more um, strategically as opposed to tact tactfully? So if, they, uh, if we're talking about business to business, mm -hmm. um, there's an area that I talk to um, corporates about, which is key account management or 
Amer the Americans call it strategic account management. And you'll have a sales team that might sell globally. And um, so you've got various um, accounts that you need to manage. It's really important for each of those accounts are going to have a different character to their business. So the um, supply chain within that business and the management of that business is, is going to be different. So the important thing first is no two accounts are the same. So the way you communicate, the relationships you have within that, that, those, uh, uh, that particular account is going to be different. So what you offer has to be different. Okay. It okay. isn't a one-size-fits-all. Okay. And that's the danger. You often have uh, account managers, account, account directors, and they actually funnel the same thing across all of the accounts. And that's the worst thing you can do. Mm -hmm. So the whole point of the relationship is to understand the relationship, understand who you've got the relationships with, and it shouldn't be one, it should be a whole host of people within that organization. And actually, you want to grow that relationship into a partnership. It needs to be mutually beneficial. So an account, again, is, is just another box, but it's what you do within that a box, and it's about aligning yourselves to the needs of the customer. So every the important thing to remember is every single account is different. So what you do with the account has to be different as well. Okay, excellent. So why, in your opinion, do you feel that most small businesses, I know you've already um, touched on this, that the smaller SME businesses tend to focus more on tactics as opposed to strategy? It's because that they don't they don't know how to pull together strategy and they waste a lot of time, energy on money, on tactics, doing the wrong thing. Businesses like to be busy because they think they're doing things. And yes, they're doing things, but actually what's the result of, of their doing? So this is why I talk a lot about um, strategy within business because there's no point just doing if it's not going to get you any return mm -hmm. so you need to take a step back and look at who are your ideal um, customers um, what value you're, you're offering them what's unique and different what's your um, competitive advantage and once you've got those elements together then you decide what are the channels you're going to use how you're going to communicate how how you can engage with with these people so most people are just engaging with everyone and anybody <laughs> and if you think if I get um, my customers my clients to think about every time they do something there's a there's a there's a value to it it's costing you something and so you need to think about that money going into the bank really so if you think that every minute of the day has a value it has a cost to it, then how are you going to spend that money? Because we have this time is limited, money is limited. How are you going to spend that money? You're going to spend it wisely, aren't you? In order to think about how wisely you can spend it, you need a strategy behind it, and then you need to um, you need to implement that strategy consistently. And that's the other thing that businesses SMEs don't do. They don't do what they're doing consistently, and so that's what I help businesses to do. Excellent, excellent. So what's really involved in creating a strategy that's going to be sustainable long term as opposed to just doing something tactically or a strategy that's just going to run for a short spell and then just die? Mm -hmm. I think one thing to keep um, the strategy on track is you've got to put in monitoring and measuring into it because if you can feel that you're getting a return for it, you're going to continue to do it. What companies often do is that they're doing things and they're not measuring it, so they don't actually know what okay. the return is. So that's going to keep them on track. But you've got to do the monitoring and measuring at the time when you create the strategy. What are we trying to achieve here and how are we going to know that we're actually getting towards the result that we want? So the monitoring comes with the strategy. Um, and uh, yeah, so what's going to stop them from kind of delving down in, into the kind of tactical level of actually doing is that you need to make sure that you allocate the right resources, you need to make sure that, you know, the people are responsible for it, you need to continue to monitor it as you're running through the programme. It has a beginning, it has a middle and it has an end and at each of those points you're, you're going to, to measure it. But that when you have a strategy, it's got to lead you somewhere. You've really got to keep your eye on the goal. Why are you doing this? What's the point of it? And that's the thing that really engages you to keep you committed to achieving that goal. How, how do you find with people, once you create a strategy, what percentage of the people, apart from having this lovely strategy on a piece of paper or 
in a PDF on, on a computer actually take action? What percentage take action and get results versus the ones got a lovely strategy here but doesn't go beyond um, similar to a business plan, you know, gathers dust somewhere in, in a filing cabinet? Well, do you know, we all need accountability. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's the thing that keeps you on your track. And so it's really important that you're part of, uh, you have an accountability partner, you're in a mastermind group, you have a, a coach or, or a mentor. Everybody needs that within their business. Every leader needs that in, in, in their business. So if you, you have a, a strategy, then they're always going to pull you back. Because there's so many things in the world, in our business, in our families, uh, in our life to distract us. And so having an accountability um, person that helps you to stay on track. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's, sometimes it's gonna be hard <laughs> really to face up to the truth. But unless you do, you're not going to reach your goals. So that's why it's really important to actually have someone that's really in your camp that can see what, where you want to go and is going to help you to, to get there. Okay, well, what inspires you? What inspires that Janice every morning to get up and filing an old four? <laughs> I, I've got a lot of energy and um, I'm quite a, a systems person as well, creative and um, system. So the two things work really well. However, what keeps me accountable is I set myself challenges. I love a challenge and I like to win. So I always set myself a challenge and it's always something that's slightly outside of what I've done before. And that's the thing that gets me up in, in the morning. So, you know, I did the Great North Run and, I'm, you know, I want to do it within a certain time. So it forces me to get up and train, <laughs> you know, excellent. and it's the same in business. So often you need to find the thing that you enjoy doing and doesn't take any effort for you to keep doing. And you align that to the things perhaps in your business that you perhaps don't enjoy doing. So you set yourself a similar challenge in your business that you might have in your you know, training life that you know, doesn't take any, any energy. So you set yourself a similar challenge and then you will find that you, you're motivated to carry it through. I've seen you a number of times on social media now, speaking at different events. How frequently are you out there um, uh, speaking at different events? I love speaking. I ab I'd be doing it every day if I could. I absolutely love speaking because it's the stories that I tell in my business or the things that I, I come across, if, if I can say something that can turn on a, a light for someone in their business or can make a difference, I, when I speak, it's not, it's not all about me. When I speak, it's really about trying to find the key for each person in that audience that's going to get them motivated, it's going to inspire them to make a change in their business the next day. So my job is to make that happen, really. That's what my, my job is. And I love it when I'm able to do that because you can actually see in the audience the light comes on or Oprah would say the aha moment. And so it's really just finding the word, the, the story, the moment in, that's going to enable people just to switch, switch gear a little bit. So I absolutely love doing that, and, I, and it's so energising as well. Um, so I, I speak at least about four times um, a month, wow. um, but, you know, I, I, I absolutely love speaking. I love to make those changes. That's fantastic. Tell me, if um, the audience out there want to connect with you, um, further, how do they get hold of you? How do they contact you? Yeah, well, my website is um, www.theproblem-solver.com. Of course. Of course. Email uh, Janice at theproblem-solver.com. Or, you know, you can call me 0207 175 0877. Fantastic. That's fantastic. One way of getting hold of you. <laughs> yes. I'm really looking forward to, you know, you being part of the Success News team and hopefully going out there interviewing all these um, corporate um, um, CEOs, executives in the corporate sort of level and trying to learn um, what we can, the audience as a whole, including myself, from the interviews that you're going to be bringing for Success News. I'm really pleased to welcome you, uh, Janice. This is Mo Nawaz from Success News. Another interview ended. Thank you.